Deirdre, you've done pioneering work in showing how dreaming relates to creativity and problem solving. It seems, for one who doesn't remember many of my dreams, that seems uh, really quite incredible. Uh, is there real science to back that up? Yes. We're conscious in some sense in our dreams, even if we don't remember them. People are dreaming about five times a night. On average, we go into rapid eye movement or REM sleep, and there's usually dream content accompanying that, but the process where we transfer short-term into long-term memory is not happening in our brains, so unless you wake up from <laughs> a dream. But everyone's dreaming a lot, and we may not need to remember them for them to accomplish various purposes. So how does that work? Dreams are probably partially determined by why we need REM sleep, and that looks like it may well be for some physiologic reasons. REM sleep came on developmentally about at the start of mammals. There, there, there are some precursors in mm -hmm. some other species, but basically most mammals dream, most non-mammals don't. That's also when elaborate thermoregulation came along, and REM sleep seems to be about fine-tuning that. The system mm -hmm. shut off during REM sleep. Uh, we're replenishing certain biochemicals. So I think that why we are in this state of very dramatic visual imagery, less verbal thinking, may be determined by something about what neurotransmitters need to be doing. And then just the fact that we're paralyzed and keep our eyes shut is probably just determined by don't die during this, you know, somewhat out of touch with sensation sleep stage. Beyond so that, I think dreams have other meanings layered layered on top of what may be the needs for REM sleep. And then how do we get to the creativity and the problem solving part? Well, dreams involve a stage where our, our prefrontal areas are much less active. Some of the visual imagination areas are much more active. And I think that basically dreams are just thinking in a different biochemical state that certain parts of our brain are more or less active, but we're still interested in all the same things, our personal emotional issues, but also our professional objective ones, worries, hopes. And you see all of the same kinds of concerns kicking around in dreams mm -hmm. that we think mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. awake. But there are well-documented instances of dreams really solving some problem that someone was stuck on awake. Those. Those happen more often when it's either a visual spatial issue where seeing something very vividly may lend itself to solving the problem. Those constitute a lot of the dream breakthroughs. And the other big cluster are where the reason that you're stuck is because the conventional wisdom is wrong in, about that particular issue and that you need to think outside the box. And again, dreams aren't using our prefrontal logical areas quite as much, and they they think more more widely and less. So you're more easily able to think outside the box because there's nothing controlling the uh, the rigidity of the box. The frontal lobes, which gives us this executive function, is is not functioning. Yes, and then you're more able to visualize things very vividly because the sensory input from right. the real world is shut down, and yet the right. part of the brain that processes that into images is is slightly more Now, if I want to be a skeptic, way. I would say something to the effect that you can bring up a lot of anecdotal evidence, this scientist or that mathematician or that artist had this ex feeling, but they might have had that anyway. And, and we don't talk about the billions of things that didn't occur. So how do you deal with that type of argument? If someone working on a particular scientific problem dreams the answer in the dream, saying, oh, that's coincidence, doesn't really make sense. Now, if you're saying that they might eventually have reached the solution awake, yes, but, but even one anecdote, unless you think the person is lying, does show that sometimes the, well, the breakthrough you... may happen in the dream well, state. Well, Dreams have directly contributed to two Nobel Prizes. I mean, for, for what a small proportion of dream content is remembered, I think that's actually a, <laughs> a fairly good batting average.